What you're about to see is an episode of Down to Earth with JP, a show where my friend Jonathan Payne is going to give you his breakdown and review of an episode of The Chosen, which is the first ever multi-season show covering the life of Jesus Christ. If you want a more in-depth breakdown and analysis of that, me, Jonathan, and some of my other friends have gotten together and we have given you those, and those are available if you go to this channel and find our playlist entitled the Chosen, and we go through each episode in depth, scene by scene, breaking down everything you want to know about the show. Uh, but that being said, this isn't my video, this is Jonathan's, so I'm going to hand this over to you, Jonathan. Hey there again, welcome back to Down to Earth with JP. Uh, today we're going to be going over episode 7 of The Chosen uh, Invitations. So this episode is probably my favorite episode uh, so far, and I think out of the entire season. Um, we get one of the biggest stories, uh, well, at least one of the biggest stories to me, um, that I was, I was really excited to see, and that's the, the uh, meeting between Nicodemus and Jesus. And I think, uh, from what we've seen so far in the season, uh, Nicodemus is such an intriguing character, it's made me so excited, uh, to see his story kind of, uh, not necessarily come to a conclusion, I think we're gonna see more of Nicodemus, but just seeing the progress to, uh, and what he's gone through to get to this point, uh, we know about this. Uh, interaction with him in the Bible. It's a very uh, well-known um, scripture, and you know he shows up a couple times in the Bible. But it's been so awesome following him through it and see him get to this point. And uh, of course, we get to ask one of the most important questions, uh, maybe in the whole Bible: What the heck is born again? <laughs> Okay, so for this episode, I wanted to kind of change things up a little bit. I've tried different formats with my videos of how I want to do them. Um, I think most of them I follow through with what happens throughout the episode. Um, and then, I don't know, in this one, I just kind of wanted to focus in on purely the aspects that uh, I enjoyed about the episode and just insights that I got from the episode rather than recapping it because this channel already has recaps on it. Um, and you've probably already watched the episode if you're watching this video. So I don't want to go back through the episode uh, scene by scene necessarily. And I think that will also shorten the video, which will make it nicer to watch through and, and not have to invest a lot of time in it. Um, and we can just hang out for a little bit and move on to the next one. If you like the previous format and you want me to go back to that, I can totally do that. I just think since we already have recaps on the channel, I would just kind of do more of what I got from the episode and kind of my thoughts about uh, things I really liked um, and things I think you'll really like about it. Or since you know, you've probably already watched it, just points of discussion that I think are, are interesting. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to kind of use going forward. Um, unless y'all just don't like that. If y'all want me to go back to recapping and talking about scene by scene, I can definitely do that. Um, uh, leave it in the comments and I will adjust accordingly. But I think I, I prefer personally doing it this way. Um, because I don't have to necessarily go through, uh, the episodes and write each scene down and what I want to talk about for each thing. It's rather just kind of my thoughts and, that's more fun to me is discussing that. And that's what I like talking to people about also rather than like, this is exactly what happened. Cause you can just watch it. So with that being said, um, I will say that the episode starts with a really cool scene. Um, that's different than the others, other episodes. And it's something that I really like because it's not, it, it ties directly into the story, but it is not, uh, like concurrent with it. It's at a separate time in the past. And those are really cool because we get to see characters and, um, things, that wouldn't normally be part of our story of Jesus um, because they're in the past. You know, this took place thousands of years ago. Uh, so this scene uh, is, uh, is the story of Moses and Joshua, and it's when they're in the wilderness and, um, you know, the serpents are, are biting them because they were rejecting the manna. And, you know, he makes the bronze serpent. And um, it's just a really cool scene, inter uh, interaction between Joshua and Moses and Joshua just being confused, like, why this doesn't make any sense? Why are you doing this? And also, in context of like, depending on your knowledge of the Bible, this this scene is like out of place compared to what we've seen so far in the show. So I, I thought it was really cool because it ties in later to the main story. And if you're watching this um, from purely the pers perspective of what you know about the show, like with no Bible knowledge, just watching the show for what it is, um, you don't know who these people are. You know, you're just learning about them and you're like, how, what does this have to do? And even, even when you're dealing with the character, you might be wondering, how does this tie into the story? Like, I know the story of Moses, but what does this have to do with the episode? And I think it's really cool to do that. Again, it's just, they're assuming, you know, 
um, they're, they're just clever. It's just clever writing, and it's really fun to watch um, and just kind of figure out, like, what's going on and um, just see the payoff later. So um, I really like that scene. Um, so this, this episode, obviously, um, focus, or maybe not, obviously, if you haven't seen it yet, um, but it, it heavily focuses on Nicodemus. Um, we kind of take a break from jumping. Oh, well, I guess it's a story. It's a story of Nicodemus and Matthew, but a lot of it is focused on this conversation with Nicodemus. That, that's the, that's the, um, the, the crown jewel of the episode, I guess. Um, and that was my favorite part too, but we do have a really good ending, uh, with Matthew, which is going to lead into the next episode, of course, like they usually do. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, of Nicodemus and Jesus in this one, uh, which are two of my favorite characters. I mean, how can you not like Jesus? And just the actor that plays Nicodemus is so good. And just the way they've depicted Nicodemus is so, uh, engaging. And, um, it's just exciting to see where his character is going to go. Like you want to see, uh, Nicodemus, um, in a way come to Christ, you know, like both physically and spiritually. So we're going to see that. And we're also going to see, uh, the story of Matthew and, um, also kind of the conclusion of his beginning story and the lead up into um, the new Matthew or the, the next chapter of Matthew. Um, so yeah, we see in this one um, some personality from Nicodemus, which we've kind of already seen. Uh, we know that he is thinking about um, miracles and his inability as a human to perform certain things like only God could heal uh, Mary. And we see him like questioning miracles with John the Baptist and finding about a, about Jesus, um, and just kind of working through this and realizing that this Jesus might be the Messiah they were waiting for, and he's um, surprisingly open-minded about it, and and very wise in the way he approaches it. Uh, compare in contrast to Shmuel, who is very set in his ways, more of the depiction of what we view most Pharisees as. Um, so, but we see we see Nicodemus is kind of protecting Jesus in a way because. He, I think he does believe that he is the Messiah, and we'll see that in the episode, um, and he doesn't want to give him up to the Romans. There's there's one very um, uh, specific moment he has with Quintus where Quintus is asking him, uh, you know, whenever you go talk to Jesus, tell me where and when it's going to happen. And it was very reminiscent of me to, like, uh, King Herod when he told the wise men to tell, uh, to come back to him after they visited Jesus as a baby, let him know, let him know where the baby's at, you know, so he can come and worship him. But obviously we know back in that time, uh, or maybe you don't, sorry, I'm, I keep assuming, uh, but back in that time, uh, he was the king, it was King Herod, and he didn't, you know, he heard this prophecy that there was going to be this child born, and he was going to, uh, become king himself. And so, uh, King Herod, didn't want any uh, opposition to his power. He didn't want anyone to take over. So he had all the uh, children, uh, all the newborns, murdered. And uh, it was a really sad, terrible time. But um, it was because of Jesus being born. And uh, we saw a hint of that in the last episode, which I mentioned. And I thought that was really cool that they referenced his time in Egypt as they fled from it. Um, but it was re very reminiscent of that, you know. Because, I, I, you know, it's, it's very obvious that uh, Quintus, uh, does not have good intentions with Jesus. He wants to, uh, either throw him in prison or have him, uh, crucified. So, um, yeah, so we see Nicodemus kind of saying like, oh no, he's no threat. You don't need to worry about him. Um, the best way to know his intentions is to talk to him. And that, you know, that's when he tells him, hey, let me know where you, you meet him at. But we're going to, you know, you see in the episode that he doesn't actually tell Quintus, uh, any of this information. So, um, he has a reverence for Jesus that, a lot of the other Pharisees don't uh, even acknowledge or accept. They just see him as a false prophet that's trying to undermine their authority um, and their rules. Um, so another really cool thing I like about this episode we see uh, when he's talking with his disciples is he already has plans uh, ahead of time. And it's just kind of this idea that um, Jesus is omniscient, like he knows what's going to happen, um, but not very obviously. So he's very subtle about it. And we know from the Bible that he doesn't um, he doesn't always know everything about the future, but he has the ability to know everything about the future if God reveals it to him. And we don't always know how that works exactly, but I think they do a really good job here of showing that you know he is aware of at least the near future and the plan that God has laid out for him. And um, he's always praying consciously in prayer about things and thinking and praying and, and all these things um, where he would get revelations for 
for what would happen, most likely. So, but we see that um, when he's like talking to Mary, uh, and Mary's telling him about uh, how Nicodemus wants to meet with him, he uh, tells her about plans for dinner the next night, which is plans to eat at Matthew's house. But he hasn't even called Matthew yet. Like, um, Matthew's not a disciple yet, so he's already knows what's going to happen there. He's already has plans for that even before it happened. And I just really like that kind of subtext in the episode that uh, Jesus does know things ahead of time. He's just not um, very blatant about it. You know, he's very subtle and he's not show offy um, about it. So um, we get we get some more story for for Matthew and his family. He goes to visit his mom, and I thought that was that was really heartbreaking to see him um, go talk to his mom. Who, who obviously loves him and um, is in a way happy to see him, but just can't, she still can't wrap her head around why Matthew would choose a career like he did. And, um, you know, she just feels betrayal from him and um, kind of like he's denying faith. It's like if you were Christian parents and you had a child that um, did something that you didn't think agreed with your faith, um, you know, and they were very insistent about that um, and wanted to do their own thing you just let them go you know um, and she feels that with him um, and maybe in a way you know Matthew did betray his people and his faith um, but it's just a it's just a really hard relationship where you know you almost want to say the mom should just forgive him and realize that he's trying to accept the truth and trying to get there um, but you can also see from her perspective how that's just a hard thing to deal with um you know family is always one of the hardest things to um deal with faith wise like um i don't know you would think it'd be easiest because they would they would know you love them regardless but it, it always ends up being one of the hardest things in in people's lives is um dealing with people who have strayed from god and, and bringing them back and um doing it in a loving way which almost seems uh, counterintuitive to how things should be and maybe it maybe it is maybe it should be hard but um yeah it's like i i have experienced some of that with my own family so i relate to that and i'm sure a lot of you do also um just dealing with people in the family like trying to love them and also trying to like deny the sinful part of their life and just reconciling those two and um trying you know and i think there's fault probably on matthew's side and on his mother's side um and I hope we see a resolution to that. We don't get to see any uh, resolution in, in this episode, but hopefully in future episodes we see him come back and maybe with Jesus and they get to meet Jesus and um, all that's kind of fixed. I think we will. The more I think about it, the more that makes sense. Um, the way they tell stories in this is just so good. And I think that that's something that we're going to see eventually. Um, and I think Matthew has a lot of work to do before he, he gets there, but I think we will see that. The conversation with Nicodemus, again, that's my favorite part of this episode. And I think they do such a good job of showing that, uh, like when uh, Nicodemus asked about being born again, uh, when we read that in scripture, it's kind of, you can take it kind of however you want. You know, you can take it as he's literally asking that because he believes it, or you could read it as he's kind of joking. Uh, but I think it's somewhere in the middle. Like, <laughs> I think Nicodemus, like, is just, his mind is like so overwhelmed with all these concepts that he thinks may maybe it's possible. I don't think that that's possible, but you know, he mentions like, oh yeah, I, mean, I have to enter my mom, my mother's womb again. I mean, she's, she's passed on to heaven. Um, so that'd be a problem for me. You know, he kind of says it jokingly, but he also has like that hint of like, wait, maybe that is what God, Jesus means. You know, I don't know anything at this point. Um, so I thought I really like the way they did that because it, it doesn't make him seem like dumb. Like, cause I think most of us would not ask that question seriously. Like no one would actually believe 100% like, take that uh for what it is exactly because it's literally impossible so i think when you read stuff like that and you take it that way it just doesn't make sense because um this guy is very wise he's he's been around a long time and he knows a lot of scripture and he's a very wise person um so it just makes sense for him not to take have taken it literally um so i really like that interpretation and just overall um like when jesus is talking about uh the holy spirit and he's uh, relating it to the wind you know we read we read that in the Bible, but in this context, it makes sense because they're on an open, like patio roof, uh, patio roof, where there's wind blowing around. You know, because they're higher up, so you can hear the wind kind of echoing around the buildings. And he just he's thinking of how to explain it to Nicodemus, and he hears the wind. And he's like, "Oh, this is how I can explain it." And it just makes sense in that context. So I just I just love the way that they take the the environment and use it to um, explain why Jesus is explaining things in the way he does. 
So again, just really good job on that. And then another another thing that I, I really liked is uh, a conversation in in their conversation, uh, the topic of um, you know again of Jesus coming to free them from the oppression of the Romans. Um, and because he's talking about the kingdom, he came to bring the kingdom. So the interpretation of the Pharisees and the Jews of that time was that that meant he's going to conquer the Romans. He's going to wipe them out. Like he's going to be militant and just free the people. Kind of like, you know, we see him do a lot, uh, God do a lot in the Old Testament, like um, bringing the plagues on the Egyptians and freeing, uh, freeing his people. And, um, you know, there's a lot of wars and things back then. Um, and so people had this mindset that that was uh, what this Messiah that was prophesied was going to do. And that was what was meant by bringing the kingdom to earth, um, that he was going to set up an actual kingdom on earth for his people to live in. Um, and that's kind of the theme of this episode is um, get used to different. You know, he says that in the end. Um, and that's one of the like taglines for the chosen is get used to different. Um, they were expecting one thing and, and Jesus um did a whole different thing than they were used to. He didn't, uh, he did what prophecy said, just not in the way they interpreted it, just like they were talking about in the, the last episode between Nicodemus and Sh uh, Shemuel. Um, they were kind of arguing about that point, and, you know, Nicodemus's whole thing was, you know, God, if God changes them something, and it is genuinely God, um, and it still aligns with scripture, that just means that your interpretation of what he meant is wrong. And that's what's so dangerous about assuming one specific point of view with prophecy, uh, such as revelations. When we talk about revelations in the Bible, we don't really know what it means because, you know, we could say that uh, the things we read in the revelations mean exactly this one thing, but that's exactly what the Pharisees did and they were very wrong. So um, you just have to be careful, especially with prophecies, because who knows how God's going to fulfill them? Um, you know, it's not our goal to understand God completely. Because if we did, what kind of God would that be? You know, if we could wrap our minds around him, um, then he'd be like the same level as us. You know, even if the smartest person in the world could understand God, then he's still only as great as the most smart, smartest human being. You know, and that's not a very great God. So our goal is not always to understand God, but when something new comes about, does it line up with the scripture and we're interpreting wrong or is it just completely wrong? And we always have to decipher that. And it's not always easy. But, you know, that's why we consult with other Christians and talk about it and question our faith um, and watch things that um, help us question that and, and seek answers. Um, and that's why we have the word of God to read through and, and make sure we are not straying in our beliefs. Um, that's why he gave us his word. So I just thought that was really cool. Um, also, because it has this uh, implication nowadays that we focus a lot on uh freeing people from certain sins um and that we need to get rid of oppression and you know focusing really hard on god is working on this specific sin right now or this specific situation but the problem behind it is always sin god came to deliver us from sin and we work as christians from the inside out not from the outside in so the message and the gospel of christ is always comes first because that's what jesus brought to us and through that we can work on the sin you know, we can work on the problems by addressing sin as a whole. And, and that will help us reach and, and figure out these problems. If we try and approach it from like, let's fix the problem and then tell them the truth about who Christ is and then get them saved, it's not going to work. It doesn't work that way. You know, you find your hope and your salvation uh, through Christ. Um, so I just thought that that was very applicable to today. And kind of the things we deal with on a, on a daily basis nowadays, whether it be some major thing that's happening or uh, just something we see on the news uh, day to day, you know, the problem is always going to be sin. It's always rooted in um, we're sinful people in need of a loving, sacrificial Savior that died on the cross for us. And that's Jesus. And that's what the story is about. And that's what he came for. And, you know, even Nicodemus was confused about that. You know, um, what they thought they needed and what they thought was coming was not what they got. What they got was actually better. Another another small thing that I thought was cool was, I kind of talked about this with David, but he, you know, at one point, um, this is probably the only thing in the episode that's a little bit, um, like, questionable about the writing. And it just really depends on what they meant by by it. But uh, he asked, is, is the uh, kingdom of God really uh, at hand or coming? 
and he says, what does your heart tell you? Um, and we know as Christians that uh, following your heart and asking your heart uh, what it wants is dangerous. Because our heart uh, strives and longs for a lot of things that aren't good for us. That's why we have the Holy Spirit um, come into us and guide us rather than following our heart and our own instincts. Um, but something I got from it is his, his response to that is kind of, you know, my heart is just overwhelmed and, and like there's fear and all these things. And, you know, that made me really think like that is how it is, you know, that's very descriptive of how our faith is. You know, our heart doesn't understand and it wants to pull towards things uh, that are not good for us and that um, cloud our judgment, you know, cloud it with fear or anxiety or um, passions or whatever it is that keep us from understanding God sometimes. And so that's why we need the Holy Spirit. And that's what I got from that. Uh, so, you know, if you heard that line and you thought that too, I think uh, Nicodemus's response to it is indicative of um, what your heart tells you, you know, when you listen to it. So I think that's probably the only gripe about the whole episode because it really is such a great episode. It's just, that's just a small line in it. But um, I just took it as that, you know, his response is the answer to why that's not a good thing to always listen to because your heart um, can mislead you. And the Bible talks about that a lot. So, you know, just be careful. Don't always follow your heart. Um, make sure your heart is aligned with, with God's will, with the Holy Spirit in you. If those are aligned, then you can listen to your heart. But, you know, a lot of times those aren't. So <laughs> just be careful with that. Um, so, yeah, we have that really great conversation. Um, and the really cool thing is that Jesus calls Nicodemus to follow him also. So we kind of see from this episode that Jesus probably did call other people to follow him um, that may not have necessarily followed him. Um, so, like, spoiler, if you, you know, haven't read the Bible, uh, Nicodemus is not one of the disciples, um, or at least not one of the core disciples. So there is, there is always the possibility that Nicodemus, uh, could join them, but as far as, like, the main 12, he's not one of them. So, you know, we have Mary already with the group, so she's not considered part of the 12, but she's still a disciple. So we could see Nicodemus become a disciple, but, um, we don't see him mentioned in the Bible. So we have a pretty good idea, even if we haven't seen any episodes after this one, that um, he's not going to end up accepting the offer. But it just shows that uh, Jesus invited people and, and called people to follow him. Just like we see the story of he tells there's someone that wants to follow him, but he knows that person deals with material things and money. And he says, give all that up and, and then you can follow me. And he doesn't want to. But, um, you know, there's still people that want to follow. And there's, there is other people other than the, the 12 apostles that are disciples of Jesus that follow him. And we'll see that more through, you know, the coming episodes, um, that there's more than just the 12. But I just thought that was cool that um, we see that he did call Nicodemus to follow him. And that's going to play an important um, role in uh, the narrative of their story also. But I just thought it was cool that they show that Jesus didn't just specifically just call just 12 people. He called other people to follow him and learn from him as well. So, um, yeah, and then we close with... Um, I see the scene with Matthew where Matthew gets called out of the tax collector's booth. In the Bible, we just get, like, Jesus just called him and he came. And, I mean, while you could read that, is that is what it was. And for whatever, you know, maybe Matthew just felt a calling in that moment. Uh, but the way they've set up the story and all the stuff behind Matthew makes so much sense. And it's just so uh, satisfying to see um, him finally call Matthew out of the tax collector's booth. All the stuff that's been going on. Him questioning the logic of this miracle, like he can't process and understand how something like that could happen. Um, so, and you know, he's just at a point where he's realizing what he thought he understood about his life is no longer sol a solid foundation. You know, he mentioned sand and a flood and, you know, he just feels overwhelmed. Like it's possible everything he believed is wrong. And the only thing that has made sense in his life now is Jesus. And when Jesus calls him, he has no choice, you know. Um, he was looking for Jesus and, you know, he had that urge to join him already and Jesus finally calling him out. So we see him, you know, without much hesitation. I think he questions at first, like, are you, are you talking to me? Like I'm a tax collector. Um, but once Jesus clarifies, yes, you, Matthew does not hesitate. He leaves that booth. He gives the keys to his house to Gaius and, um, he goes away. And, um, Simon obviously has a really big problem with this cause he doesn't like Matthew at all. Um, he's like, this is different because he's a tax collector. And then we get the famous line, get used to different. And they walk away. And uh, two really cool closing things is um, we see that Matthew has his uh, like tablet, which is showing that, you know, he's keeping 
the stuff he wrote from the previous episode with the miracle of the paralyzed man and he also has something to write and he's going to be the future writer of the gospel of matthew um and that's where all this writing comes from so just a little tiny like easter egg i guess to show that uh and explain how we got the book of matthew and um also we see him say finally at the end um that or jesus says you know we're gonna have dinner at your place um it's really funny because he's like i'm not welcomed anywhere he's like well that's not gonna be a problem because it's gonna be at your house and that's kind of the closing line um just showing that jesus had this plan the whole time um he knew he was gonna call matthew he kind of gave him the look at the end of last episode saying you know letting matthew know that he is seen and, and jesus knows about him and um he knew ahead of time he, you know he's gonna call him and that was this point all the time so that's just a really cool way to wrap up the episode overall um so yeah those are my thoughts <laughs> the video still ended up being uh like around 30 minutes um but i i enjoy just kind of talking about things and how they relate to my life and our lives and just the current world now and just cool little insights i got from it rather than just purely going scene to scene because again you've seen the episode probably if you're watching this and yeah i just like discussing cool things um and how awesome the show is this is probably my favorite episode out of all of them just because i was looking so for uh i was looking forward to um this conversation with nicodemus so much uh, I don't think necessarily because that episode or that uh, part in the Bible is the most impactful to me specifically, but but also or more because of the fact that uh, I really like Nicodemus as a character in the show, and just seeing the development of his processing of everything that's going on and his kind of uh, arc into uh, who who he's becoming and what he's believing and just seeing this wise, knowledgeable person realize that he doesn't know everything and that's part of wisdom is acknowledging that you're always learning and that's what he told shimmy on the last episode so i was just sort of really excited because i knew that was um you know something from the bible that we were going to get to eventually so finally seeing that and just the way they did the whole scene was so like heartbreaking and also like so like exciting to see um nicodemus come to that point and um realize like he's standing before god you know um because you can kind of see that uh, as a christian you know if you knew who jesus was or knew of the messiah and then you like talked to this person and came to the realization that this is the messiah this is god in the flesh and you were talking to him and he took the time to answer your questions and sit with you like that would just be so overwhelming and you can really feel that um through the actor that plays nicodemus and in the scene so i really like that you know those are my favorite moments the ones that we can really relate to i think that's why i really liked episode four also with matthew where you know he's he's so like kind of angry and upset with god and just can't understand why god isn't there for him um and then when god finally is there for him just this realization floods on him that this is god and he is so unworthy to be before him he just falls on the ground um so yeah, I really like scenes like that. They're so powerful to watch on screen, and I think they do such a good job of showing that. Um, so yeah, I, I think this is my favorite episode so far, and of the entire episode. So thanks again so much for joining me. I hope you've stayed with me this whole time. If this is your first video, I have done all the other six episodes before this one, and I plan to continue doing episodes and uh, going over them. I'm really excited to start on the second season, which is already, there's a few episodes out now. I'm trying to catch up to that, but I hope you've taken the time to kind of come back with me and look back on these and just kind of discuss this with me. Um, you have any comments or anything you want to talk about, um, leave it in the, the comments. Or if you know me in person, let's talk about it. Um, I love discussing the show and just um, exploring what scripture, how it relates to scripture and how accurate the show is and um, what, what insights and things you got from them. Because I think everyone takes away different things from each episode and different things are impactful to different people. And I think that's what's so cool about the show. Um, so yeah. Please like and subscribe. Um, David has lots and lots of videos on the Bible, on the Chosen, um, on other move, random movies and stuff. Um, and you know, even if you go and watch one of his like uh, two, uh, superhero reviews, which I'm in a couple of them, um, <laughs> he's always drawn to um, the gospel, and you know, he loves talking about God and relating stuff to that. And so just an awesome channel. Go check out his other videos and keep watching my videos. I'm going to come out with new episodes very soon for uh, the rest of the episodes that are out now and uh, keep up with those uh, 
as close as possible to their release date. So thank you again for joining me and like and subscribe. Okay, bye. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and comment below and give us your thoughts. If you want to see more about The Chosen, be sure to go check out our Chosen playlist where we're working on giving you an in-depth analysis of every single episode of the show. If you want to know about how Christians can interact with our surrounding culture, especially with media like movies, TVs, and books, be sure to like and subscribe to Now Let's Be Honest About Movies. God bless.